this is about the seventh video I've done about these cars and now I seem to hate every one I do about it. As you can see I've started pulling bits off the Falcon and you can see the back panel's not the one it had either. Um, the exhaust is being removed. So anyway, this is what happened to Holly's ED, the one that had, well when I did the video, about 156,000 Ks on it. Now it's got about 160. Um, this is what happens when idiots drive going through intersections and uh, looking at their mobile phone. And in my opinion, I think you should never be eligible for a license if you drive using your phone. That's just a slightly harsh view I have, but I think it's I think you can see why I might have that opinion. It's not fixable, we did look at it, but it's actually bent quite a lot. If I go down to this point of view, you can see that yeah, it doesn't line up anymore. The top sticks out. By the time you get to the bottom, it sits in. So, yeah, it's bent quite a lot. Like this part of B pillar is bent in. The door opens and closes, but well, it's not there. Not much to see. Um, already pulled bits of it off. Now we're actually building a shed to accommodate all the really awesome as freak condition bits from this car. So. Uh, I gotta remember not to swear, but if my video gets tagged, I don't really care. I mean, let's face it, I'm not making money out of this, so if the video gets tagged and the censor, it's not censorship anyway. Like, YouTube aren't saying you can't say this, all they're saying is we're not paying you to if you are gonna say this. So, you know, everyone just chill out a little bit. It doesn't affect me, I do this because I like doing it. I'm not pumping content out because I might make some money out of it. I don't make money out of it. I'm not making anything. So, anyway, that's the old. This is the new. And as you can see, I've done quite a lot of work to it already. This is the headlights, indicators, and front bar off the um, smashed one. So, the astute of those among you might realise those are the plates off the EB. But we got an angry letter from the council about unregistered cars out the front because I had a parts car, a VT, on the nature strip. I don't think I shot any content of that because it was pretty boring. But I wanted bits for the uh, Calais. And the thing is, the um, council didn't think it was very good parking it there for two weeks. So this thing has 190,000 Ks on the clock. Um, the exhaust from the other car is on this one. So, yeah, that's the almost brand new exhaust from the other car. Now the back panel and lights on the back of this are, yeah, from the other car. So, I'll open the boot. The boot I've detailed, the only dirt in the boot is from the cloth I used to apply the armor all. But this is, this is what's possible to achieve if you really, if you really put your mind to it. Like I said, the little, you know, little bits there are, they're just fluff from the cloth I used, which was yellow and apparently not as lint-free as it claimed to be. So this carpet's out of the other car, but it's been detailed. The inside's just been wiped over with armor all, which is why it looks all nice and pretty. So yeah, there's no tow bar. The holes for the tow bar in the boot floor are actually factory. So I just used these rubber plugs from the other car to, you know, fill the holes up. There are also two holes here, which I haven't plugged yet because I forgot about them and the holes here I've put little plugs in them too so the bumper lines up nicely the bumper front and rear off the other car never nudged anything and as you can see we've got a factory blanking plate for the tow bar and it's missing three out of the two uh, yeah two out of the three little barb clips but the middle one's pretty strong but I could put some um, sicker flex behind it just to stick it in place. You'd only need to do it around this part, but this is different color to the bumper. So I'm gonna actually paint this, the, um, I can't remember what color this is. It's dynamic white, I think, which is whiter than stark white. So this thing's not bad. It's, um. oh yeah, we actually replaced this seal on the boot. See, this is what a seal's meant to look like. See, it's puddingy and spongy. Um, if your seal's all flat, the boot's gonna leak. Um, Grandpa, whatever his name was that owned this thing, had one of those little bottles that came with the car. And that was the result. So those are gonna be made to look nice because it looks absolutely terrible. 
you know, there's little chips he's gone over. You know, for the love of God, please don't touch it up yourself. Pay someone to do it. Um, there's a yod. It's, it's got no rust, except it, it kind of looks like it where the drip check is sort of cracked. Um, it just needs to be sanded back or something in phosphoric acid, but the panel bead is going to take care of that. I'm not going to do that myself. I fix engines, not bodywork. And same with the bonnet. Like, it's got the odd idiot spot here and there. So, the grill's from the other car too, actually. Now let's open the bonnet. Now, another thing I've done to this, we've got a set of leads, but we've ordered a dizzy cap and rotor button because they're a pain to get off, because um, they're under here. They don't really ever need to come off anyway. You can just see the leads there. But if you're gonna replace the leads, you might as well replace the cap, because they do break down. Today, and yeah, look, got a battery cooler. Whoever sees an EA to ED series Ford with a battery cooler? Not that many. They were always removed. Even I used to rip them off and throw them away. But they're there for a reason, because the battery sits pretty close to the exhaust. As you can see, it's sort of a hand span away. Yeah, it has a little shield. The shield's also off the other car, because it looked better. Actually, so is the dipstick. But, this is what I did today. If the camera wants to focus, be a good camera. There we go. So that's what I did today. There's a little, it's a white with black trace color. I don't really remember what that goes to, but I've extended it. Heat shrank and solder, obviously, because you know, you're an idiot if you use anything else. Crimp plugs are okay, but you do have to solder them because remember, battery, acid, corrosion. So that I just soldered on. Nice new brass terminals. The layout's a little bit disappointing. It's, I can't really do much better than that. It's not like it's a 70s car where it's only got this and just about nothing else. Maybe another wire. And in case you didn't realize it, this is, a, this is a style of fusible link. So that's these plugs here. That's what they are. They're actually fusible links. So if you're wondering why the alternator is connected straight to the battery via one of these cables, it's because it's actually a fusible link. It's not actually just a wire. So if something goes short between the alternator and the body, it'll internally melt and sever the connection. So I've done the same thing with this. I'm not overly thrilled with the way I've done it like it. I'm sure it, yeah, it looks neat enough. Certainly a lot better than what this thing had. So I think that concludes the talking part of this, except but to show you guys what the interior looks like. The driver's seat is one of the best I've ever seen. It's easily probably, well, this is, a, this is like 1994, so it's old. It's 2017 now, and um, anyway, you can see that the fabric's just absolutely superb. It's in really good condition. It, it's not dirty. The passenger seat's even better, like it looks like a new seat. Now, if you have a buggered driver's seat and you're not happy with it, you'll never be able to get this fabric. So what you do, go along to your local wreckers, pick apart, especially a self-serve wrecker like that, get a passenger seat from the front. The fabric's actually identical pretty much always in most cars identical. Some cars are different. Take your driver's seat and your new passenger seat, that the passenger seat's gotta be in good nick, obviously, and take it to an interior guy and get them to change, you know, the, the, the cloth, because it's the easiest way of getting a good cushion, because the cushions are identical as well. But anyway, the carpet, it's clean. I have a feeling the carpet in the other one's actually better. Like this is sort of, Got some funny stains and things, but um, it's not bad. The door trims are going to be changed, some of them, because this driver's one looks a bit shit. Um, they're the new leads. I started fitting them and then realised the dizzy cap's buggered, so, so this is the back seat. Let me get this camera back a little bit. You can see how good that is. So the whole car's pretty much like that. And um, I'm going to plop this camera down, point it at the engine because I know everybody loves a engine starting up video. I have to say, including myself. Um, uh, I know everybody likes a good engine starting up video, including me. I'm gonna just zoom in a bit.
it hasn't had an oil change but I have topped it up so the oil in it definitely is due for a change this car sat for three years and originally the car was going to be um, a courtesy car and a smash repairs but they realized it was just far too good to do that with it because courtesy cars are always trashed they said so we paid 800 bucks for this I don't think that's too much I think it's actually a bargain because there's not even a crap one of these on eBay, let alone one in good nick. So... And it started up like that, apparently after three years of not being started or touched. It would probably run a little bit smoother. Sorry about that everyone. Crappy cameraman chip. Um, it would it would run quite a lot smoother if the dizzy cap and leads were replaced because the towers on the on the cap are quite corroded. So uh, yes, clean engines. It's great to work on clean engines, but um, if you do that, be aware that you're probably going to end up destroying things as well as cleaning things. So that's why mechanics tend to use kerosene guns when they're around stuff like that. But you know you don't want to get kerosene in things either. So. If you're going to clean the engine with a pressure cleaner, do it, put a bag over the dizzy, if you can't be bothered, clean the motor out, then replace the dizzy cap and leads and stuff. I mean, really, the leads are original anyway. So it is running coolant, and it just runs absolutely superbly, like, it doesn't leak oil, it's got no mechanical noise whatsoever, and it shouldn't have, it's done under 200,000 k's. So, Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. No, the aircon doesn't work. Yes, it does have gas in it. Uh, all I did was just undo the cap and depress the Schrader valve with uh, something made of plastic, I think, because I didn't want to damage anything. And yes, it does have maybe 50 PSI of gas in there just based on what came out. Just I didn't let any gas out to speak of. It's an R134A system, just in case you're curious at all. That's the... Um, specs of the air conditioning. I don't know why that sticker's upside down because the other one isn't so oh well you'll just have to turn your head upside down. So this thing doesn't have an oil cooler which the other one does so that's going to be fitted to here. It's actually a factory oil cooler for the tranny. If I zoom in there you'll never see anything because it's a bit of an abyss. Yes there you go. Center of the frame. That is a knockout. There's two knockouts for the um, cooler lines. I'll actually show you on the other car. So if we go here, that's the knockouts, but this is obviously with the bumper removed. So that is gonna make it to the other car. Any, any additional cooling you can offer your auto transmission, especially if you're towing trailers, especially if you're a Hoon, um, and when I say hoon driving, I don't mean idiot hoons that everyone hates. I mean if you lay into it every now and again, things like that, any extra cooling you can offer your transmission will extend the life of the transmission fluid, will extend the life of the frictions. You know, it will stop things getting too hot. Transmissions get really, really hot, really, really quickly under heavy load because any time there's slip in the torque converter, yes, it's a fluid coupling, but that fluid coupling suffers from friction because fluid obviously has mass it has inertia and it does have friction causes friction and you know there's so much slip so the, the temperature in a transmission can raise to an alarming point now that's never more evident than a vt commodore because they have a huge radiator a cooler in each side of the radiator tank so what you'd call the top and the bottom or inlet and outlet if you like and it also has one of these that's off a of VT. So they, I know Holden had a lot of trouble keeping the 4L60E cool. Now Ford, much the same. If you had the tow pack, you could you could specify um, the cooler. A lot of people towed caravans with these things. And I'm not sure why, because a caravan is something you really need a four-wheel drive to tow legally. But this, but when these were new, you could tow caravans legally with them. So. Um, you really need the cooler for doing that, but you know that thing's never going to tow in its life It's going to go on classic historic plates when it's eligible so thanks for watching everyone and uh, Have a good day